Hi everybody and uh, Merry Christmas. This is Victor from Trend Following Trading for Beginners. And today's episode is a special episode on mindset. Not sure if you have heard or read anything from Mark Dutness, who is the author of Trading in a Zone and a Disciplined Trader. To me, Mark is one of the best trading psychology coach uh, um, on, in the fields, in the uh, trading circles. And his book somehow seems to speak to me more than anything else. Sadly, he has uh, passed away about four years ago now, uh, but his knowledge is timeless. And I, I'm hoping uh, you will find some useful information in this uh, podcast. Basically, uh, what's coming is consists of an uh, audio extract from a TV interview that Mark have done uh, in back in the US years ago, probably in the 80s or 90s. And uh, I have no idea when, how, how long it went by. Yank it out from uh, the YouTube and uh, basically I cut out all the advert and just leave what he actually said during the interview in, in audio format and what I would do is um, um, during that um, the, the episode you also found that there will be some uh, um, couple of uh, excerpts from, from, from me basically adding my two cents worth and then basically see how, how I feel uh, what I can extract from, from the audio from what uh, the lessons that Mark is talking about and reflect on my journey and uh, add my experience and hopefully you can uh, get some benefit, additional benefit from it. So enjoy and speak to you later. Good morning traders. Thank you for joining us on this WTV special on putting your mind over the market. I'm Jared Levy, Chief Options Strategist here on Wise Trade TV and using psychology in today's market is not an easy thing to master. It takes a lot of discipline and skill to become a consistent and successful trader. Here to talk to you about what you need to do in order to put your mind over the market is Mark Douglas. Mark has been a successful trader since the 80s and has written two books on trading psychology, both Trading in the Zone and The Disciplined Trader. You've heard me talk about them many times here on WTV, and he is here today to help you become successful traders. Mark, good morning. <laughs> How's it going? Good morning, Jared. Glad to be here, and I hope I can be of assistance to uh, some of your traders who are viewing right now. Mark, you know, last time we were together was at Wise Fest and mm -hmm. uh, had a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really excited you're here with me today. Thanks. So well, let's get started. First of all, you know, one of the things, one of the main things, one of the main issues that I see all the time is that people don't use their method to its full potential. In other words, there's a negative correlation between where the, what the trader ends up with and what he could have had if he just followed his methodology. Right. Uh, in your DVD program, you refer to this as the profit gap. This is a problem. You refer to it as the profit gap. And I think it's one of the least understood concepts of trading. Can you address this a little bit, this profit gap? Yeah, that's actually a really good place to start because, because I think that more than anything, what your viewers want or what your customers want are consistent results. They want to be able to produce an income that, you know, that they can rely on from their trading. And I'm sure that, that you know, many of your viewers have already realized that that's, getting a steady income is not such an easy task. Yeah, and everyone seems to get trapped thinking that because trading is easy. Right. Or because it's easy to find yourself in a winning trade, exactly. which many people do. Right. You know, that they think it's also easy to become a consistent winner. Right. And, and, and you know, it, it took a long time before it actually dawned on me that winning and being a consistent winner are two completely different animals, two different things. And in some ways, there isn't even a relationship between the two. It almost seems like there's no relationship between the two. Yeah. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a real hard mental barrier to break through. Mainly because, you know, we, we, it's so easy to find yourself in a winning trade in that... In that it, because winning actually requires no skill at all. In other words, unless you unless you consider that you know the being able to click a mouse button or you know tap a pad is a skill, right. and and we don't have to have a reason or good reason or even actually any reason to put your cursor on the buy or sell button and then immediately find ourselves in a winning trade. And it could be a monster of a winning trade. And what did it take? What 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 kind of uh, you know what what kind of skills did it take to actually experience this? Absolutely not. Yeah. So, so it'd be natural to take the leap from, well, if it's this easy to win, it can't be that much harder to make a steady income. Like you said, it's, it's that easy to click the mouse for me to sit there and make five or $10,000, and it must be pretty darn easy for me to sit there and right. make a living out of this. You know, and that's what I thought for a long time, but that is not the case. No, no, and that's exactly how I started out too. And I know, I, unlike not unlike a lot of other people who who are willing to let's say give up a real high-paying career to be a trader because they thought it couldn't be that hard. So, so what makes consistency so challenging? What's the what's the big hurdle there? 
Well, we're going to obviously we're going to get into that, but but at the most general level, I'm going to say that it requires learning the type of skills that people just simply aren't used to learning. Mental skills. Mental skills. Yeah, exactly. In other words, it requires mental skills. Most people assume that because their technical method gives them a signal get, to get into a trade, that if the method produces a high percentage of winners, it will equate to a consistent income, not taking into consideration that the proper execution of those signals requires mental skills. Give us an example of this. Okay. Well, take for an example, you know, a high school basketball player who, you know, he, he, he'll he'll go in the gym and practice throwing his free throws maybe for even two or three hours a day it wouldn't be unusual for him to be able to hit fifty in a row would it i mean yeah. is that is that that that's you not see that all the out of the realm of reality yeah. right okay so the problem is that could he even hit two in a row if the circumstances were he was in the final game of the NCAA uh, championship his team is down one point there's only a few seconds left on the clock and he was just fouled Changes everything. Yeah, under those circumstances, without the appropriate mental skills, hitting, hitting either one of those free throws is very unlikely. And regardless of how well someone could do it in practice, most people would choke. So, so really the skills you're referring to, what you're talking about, Mark, is actually staying focused on the process, staying positively focused on the process itself, in this case, of throwing the ball, in our case, obviously, of training or following your method, right. and not being worried about blowing it, about the consequences of what could happen if this trade goes wrong. Exactly right. Just like what I'm going through right now. <laughs> trying, to stay focused, yeah, trying to stay focused on the process of this presentation and not blowing it. <laughs> what are you doing, fantastic? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, with training, we may have a technical method telling us what to do and giving us the potential to generate consistent results. But like the basketball player, without developing the appropriate mental skills, it's, it's unlikely we'll be able to do what our method or trading plan is indicating, indicating without making a number of potential execution errors. In other words, to stay positively focused on the process of trading by doing exactly what we need to do, when we need to do it, without hesitation, reservation, or fear. Okay. That's interesting. So you see, no matter how good a technical method is at generating winning trades, turning those winners into a consistent income requires the ability to do or not do some things that the method itself can't help us with. For example, our method can't force us to predefine the risk of getting into a trade. Or if we do predefine the risk, our method can't force us to take the loss that ends up turning into a bigger loss. Right. And, and, you know, that's happened to everybody. Okay, Our method can't prevent us from moving a stop closer to our entry point where we get stopped out and the market trades back in our favor. Our method can't prevent us from hesitating and getting in too late. Or our method can't, can't stop us from jumping the gun and getting in too soon where the signal to actually get in never really develops. And our method can't stop us from getting out of a winning trade too soon and leave money on the table. Mm -hmm. Nor can it prevent us from letting a winning trade turn into a losing trade without having taken any profit. I know that all of our traders have experienced these issues. I, I know they have, and, and I think really what you're saying is that the methodology, and, and this methodology, folks, what we're talking about when we say the word methodology is the wise trade software, is the, is, that's our method. And it can give us winning trades. We've seen, I know all of you have had winning trades, but it cannot give us consistent results if we're susceptible to making the kind of mental errors that you're talking about right. here, okay? Exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. And all the mental errors I just listed are the result of thinking, no, I'm saying, a result of thinking, believing, or assuming that our technical method is telling us what's going to happen next on a trade-by-trade -trade basis and not understanding that technical methods aren't designed to do that. Right. Technical methods and patterns are designed to put the odds of success in our favor over a series of trades. It may not seem like it on the surface, but there's some profound psychological implications here. What this means is the outcome of the signals generated by any technical method on a trade-by-trade -trade basis are unique and random. In other words, there's no way to know in advance what the outcome to any particular signal will be or what the sequence of wins or losses will be over a series of trades. It's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I understand what you're saying. And I, I think, you know, um, we, we need to, first of all, know that many of our viewers out there are experiencing the same sort of thing, okay? Uh, and, and they're probably going to have some trouble grasping this concept that by accepting the randomness of these outcomes they can produce consistent results. That's 
That's an odd concept. Yeah, that's, but that's exactly what I'm saying, Jared. I know it's somewhat of a paradox to think that events that have a random outcome can produce a consistent result, but think about it. This is the principle that's been used by casinos for hundreds of years. Right. Technical methods and patterns will give the individual trader the same kind of advantage the casino has over the individual player. If, if the trader can think about it from the proper perspective. On the other hand, if a trader who has, who, 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 let's say, who has uh, generated his signal from a technical method hasn't learned to integrate this principle, this randomness principle, into his trading regimen, he'll undoubtedly find that trading can be one of the most frustrating, if not exasperating, endeavors he's ever chosen to undertake. You know, and I know there are a lot of viewers out there who may be experiencing frustration. In fact, I know there are definitely viewers who are experiencing frustration, but I'm not sure if they're making the connection that the reason because, you know, they don't believe in this randomness principle where you can generate consistent returns by looking at the outcomes of their trades as random and unique. Right. They have to be able to view that as random and unique. You know, that, that's, I think, the big issue. No, I know, and that's, that's why we're here explaining it right now. You see, the frustration comes from expecting, from our expectations. It's from expecting something from our technical method it just can't do. Technical methods define and identify patterns in collective human behavior. Right. Now, the patterns definitely exist. They repeat themselves over and over again. The problem is the outcomes don't always correspond with the patterns on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. So what I'm saying is that, yes, we have patterns, yes, the, the, and, they, and they repeat themselves over and over, and our minds just naturally think, well, I have a pattern that's consistent, I should have an outcome that's consistent with the pattern, right. and, and that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that there doesn't have to be a relationship between the outcome and the pattern. Right. So, and if the last trade was a winner, right. this trade, even if the charts are the same, right. even if we've got the same exact signal, the same looking chart, there's no guarantee that this trade is going to be the exact same as the past one. Exactly. In other words, this trade, the trade I'm in right now, could turn out to be a winner. And, and does that mean that, that the next trade is going to be a winner? Absolutely not. This trade I'm in right now could end up being a loser. And does that mean that, that the next trade is going to be a loser? No, absolutely not. Yeah. This is interesting. I mean, I, I'm trying to, for, for, for us up here, you know, the goal, the, the main goal is obviously to take these concepts and reduce them down to the most simple of terms. So, you know, let's again back up here for a second. There are traders out there using Wise Trade every right. single day. They're getting the same exact patterns, okay? But what you're saying is even though the specific criteria is being used to identify the pattern, okay, for mm -hmm. each signal, same right. criteria, same, right. same, same formula, same everything. Right. The, the chart outcomes, pattern can look exactly the same. The, the, yeah, everything. Right. The right. outcomes to each signal have no relationship to one another. That's right. That's exactly what I'm saying. That there's a random distribution between wins and losses over any sequence of trades that, that you might look at. And so, you know, uh, and, 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 and again, this is, this is a very difficult concept to grasp, but it's, it's really the traders who have, uh, who have grasped it, let's say, and, and learn how to think in what I call probabilities. Okay. They're the ones that, that don't experience the same kind of, you know, the same kind of emotional trauma that the typical trader does because they're expecting something that just, just may not happen. So, for an example, if, if this trade's a winner based on uh, this particular trade I'm in right now, based on the exact same criteria okay. that you know, or let's say I'm in a trade right now, or I'm getting into a trade right now, and the exact same, same criteria exists in the market that did the last time, I'm going to naturally expect it to be a winner if it was a winner the last time. Or I probably will naturally expect it to be a loser if it was a loser maybe the last time or, or we had two or three losers in a row. And this could be a source of frustration for traders. Oh, absolutely. In other words, if, yeah, and that's, ex and that's exactly what happens. It is a source of frustration because if I'm expecting it to be a winner and it turns out to be a loser, I'm going to be frustrated. Not only going to be frustrated, I may, I'm going to be disappointed and I may feel, even feel betrayed depending on how much, you know, how much kind of energy that I put into the idea that, this, that the trade is going to be right. Well, how do we get over that? I mean, how does a trader take, you know, okay, so I've got all the things right. I've got my charts lined up. I've done everything I was supposed to do. 
How does the trader at least begin to accept these sorts of things, or, or you know, how do they right. begin to remedy these issues? Well, the, here we have, kind of have to get into the nuts and bolts, the nuts and bolts of this, of, of just exactly how the markets work. Because I think that one of one of the big problems, one of the reasons why people have such a difficult time with this, is because their initial exposure to the markets themselves is through electronics. Right. In other words, there, there's through electronics, there's a, a real disconnect between what you're actually participating in and what's causing, you know you to want to participate in the first place. In other words, you know, markets started as exchanges. Right. And there were, and, and so when you trade, you traded at an exchange, mm -hmm. so you know that all prices are people-generated events. Correct. They are, and, and see, this is what people have to take into consideration. Everything happens because of what people believe. There is no, when, when you look at the nature of trading and break it down to its simplest components, what you have is everyone trying to do the same thing. There is no possible way that any of us can make money as traders unless we can buy low and sell high or sell high and buy low. Correct. Is there, is there any other way, Jared? No. No, no other in way. In every market. In every market. So basically everyone's trying to do the same thing, are they not? Yes. Everyone is doing the same things. Now the reason why we have price movement is because everyone has a different idea about what, a, what is high and what is low. Okay. Right. So now I, I expose, get exposed to a technical method. Now, what does this technical method do? And this is and this is the relationship that people need to grasp. If they grasp this relationship, then they can grasp this idea that that you know that you can take the same set of criteria and end up with random results. And it's this. It's like what people realized years ago is that you can apply, you can take data points in other words data points meaning what you're doing is you're you're translating the human you know the, the human behavior the human belief in if if I'm going to buy Into something at, visual, was that no? It doesn't have to be visual, but it's like it could be. Yeah, it started out being visual. It started out being chart patterns based right. on bar charts. But but what you do is is that is that if I'm if I'm going to um, uh, if I'm going to buy, it's because. At right now, let's say the last price is 10, and I, and I put in an order to, to buy something at 10, okay? Right. It's because I believe that the market's going to go to 11, Correct. or it's going to go to 12. Right. Certainly, if I thought or I believed it was going to go to 9, I would wait, would I not? Correct. So yeah. the reason why I'm buying at 10 is because that's what I believe. In other words, in other words you know, it, all price movement is based on people's belief about what's going to happen in the future. Now, now you said to me in a conversation we had yesterday, um, obviously, we as individual traders are not large enough in our accounts to move the market exactly and okay. so this is this is yeah this is the next connection that people have to make is that is that since all price movement is based on people's conviction or belief about the future how do prices actually move for an example when when you put in an order or i put in an order i don't i don't trade at a level where i can actually move prices but what the typical screen-based trader doesn't understand is that there are traders, there are many, there are thousands of traders out there who do move prices, mm -hmm. and that it is their intention to move prices. Or you can have a large group of traders coming into the market and then cause prices to move. But what actually has to happen for prices to move is this, is that if the last price of something is 10, for, for the market to actually move to 11, all the offers have to be taken out, meaning right. that, or move to 12, all the offers at 11 have to be taken out. So in other words, people who are trying to sell at 11 they have to get their orders filled before it can get to 12. Okay. Well, for someone, for someone to actually bid it to 11 or bid it to 12, they are doing the exact opposite, and this is really critical. They are doing the exact opposite in that moment of what it takes to be successful. Okay. They're not buying low, they're buying high. They're okay. buying high relative to the last price. And, and or buying higher relative to the so, last So how price. does understanding this concept, how does understanding what moves the markets help our traders to take it to the next level? How does, I mean, is this the first step for them getting control and, and understanding how the well, market's working? And yeah, they, yeah they definitely have to understand. They have to understand how prices move because when they understand how prices move, then they'll understand how their technical method relates to this movement because what technical methods do, whether it's a visual pattern or, or you know, uh, moving averages or a wise, any, a wise trade or whatever, you're using mathematical mathematical formulas okay yeah, you're agree. taking data points in other words you're taking what people believe about the future transforming them or transposing them into a data point okay. as a price a price over time right. okay or with volume right. there's there's any or a number fresh cross. yeah the fresh, there's there, 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 just there's any number that's what it ends up being is a fresh cross but i'm right. talking about the actual mathematical formula that makes the fresh cross okay. okay so there are any number of variables that go into this equation now what people have found is that and this is here 
what people have found is that using these data points into certain types of mathematical equations, you can find patterns in collective human behavior. And what these patterns mean is this, is that, is that, is that when, the, when this set of criteria okay, is present in the market, right. that there is simply a higher probability than not. In other words, there's a higher probability, or what I'm going to call an edge, a higher probability of one thing happening over another, that people, that other people are actually going to come into the market and bid it higher from here or offer it lower from here. There's just, in other words, when the pattern is present, this collective pattern is present, it will repeat itself. Sure. But the problem is, is that, is that it repeats itself on a random basis because, because even though the actual mathematical criteria is exactly correct it's or not, exactly the same. You can't, that doesn't, mathematical models can't predict human beings. That's right. Mathematical right. models can't predict who the actual individuals who are going to come into the market and actually do it. Right. In other words, it takes someone to do it. When you put on a trade, if you're not going to make your trade a winner by bidding the market, if you bought something by bidding the market, you know. Using one, all of my money. Using something. all, all of your money to, to, you know, if you bought something at 10, you could, you could actually wipe out all the offers and, and bid it to 11 or bid it to 12 or bid it to 13. Now, the prices at 13, all the trades that you put on at 10 are winners, right? Yeah, but I okay. still bought it at 11 and 12. Yeah, but well, you're averaging up. But the point is, all the trades that you put on were winners. You actually made yourself a winner. That's correct. But what I'm saying is that when you don't trade at that level, you, we are actually obliged to other traders to come in to buy something at a worse price than, than, we, than what we thought was low to make us winners. So what you're saying is most of us out there are dependent upon someone else exactly. to move the market for us. We're trying to identify that pattern, obviously, using the wise trade software. Right. To find those common entries, but again, it's a random event. Well, but we're, yeah, we're putting the edge you yeah, said in our favor, yeah. Jared. When you put on a trade, okay. When you put on a trade, do you know who? Now, now, what we've done, we, we've reduced the market down to these terms, okay. Mm -hmm. That it takes someone else to make us a winner, right? Correct. Okay. When you put on a trade, do you think about who that might be? Who might come into the market to actually make you a winner? No, of course not. Yeah, no. And and if it turns out to be a winning trade, do you know who that who those traders were or who that trader was that actually made you a winner? No. Is there any way to know? <laughs> no. There might be, but it'd be pretty hard to find out, right? I mean, you could you, you make could a go, few phone you, calls. You could go, yeah, well, you can go to the you can go to the, the, the clearing firm, you know, the firm that clears the, or the you know, the, the bottom line is you bottom can. line, yeah, exactly. So what I'm saying is that is that when when you're when you're when the pattern presents itself, like okay, I have an edge here. When the pattern presents itself, we don't have any idea about of who is actually going to come into the market to do this for us. And so there's no point in analyzing. There's no point in judging. There's, there's no point in, in, you know, in trying to figure out whether it's going to work or not. It would be like, for an example, if I said to you, Jared, I'm going to give you a coin. And this coin is weighted in a way where it's going to come up head 70% of the time. Right. Now, just because, it, just because I, know, I know mathematically and statistically that this pattern of coming up heads 70% of the time exists. Do, is there still any way for me to know the actual sequence to heads to, heads to tails? Of course not. It's an infinite... Well, no, I'm I saying, mean, do, well, I, do I know the sequence? In other words, I'm going to flip the coin 100 times, and statistically it's going to come up heads 70% of the times. I still don't know which... Which times flips are going to heads, which are Yeah, which tails. flips are going to come up heads. They say which flips. It's not the times. Right. Which ones? In other words... Which, you know, we flip the coin once, it comes up heads. Flip the coin twice, it comes up heads. The next one's tails, the next one's tails, the next one's tails. In other words, we could have streaks of heads or tails, okay? Yeah. We, could have, we could have streaks in there. The point that I'm making is that there is no way to know the actual sequence. But at the end of the day, we know we have 70%. 70 so what that does, that, 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 that obligates us, if we want to be able to trade our methodology in, in, in an effective fashion, to be able to utilize this methodology in a way where we can extract the maximum amount of profit that it, that it makes available to us based on the pattern that it identifies, we, we, have, to, we have to do it in certain ways. In other words, we, we have to, our mind has to be free to be able to execute these trades without making trading errors. And the trading errors come from believing, believing that that the, because the pattern is present, that it's going to give me a winning trade on this one. This trade is going to be a winner. You can't think that way. No, you can't think that you way. You can't think that That's way. the way the typical trader thinks. Right. The typical trader thinks, I'm not going to put this trade on unless I think it's going to be a winner. Or why would I do it? So and, then, so, and, 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 it and it skews our expectations. See, it messes our expectations well, Let's up. back up a couple seconds here. I, there's some great stuff here, Mark, and I hope our traders are getting all of this. You're, you're basically saying, and this makes a whole lot of sense to me, and I hope it's getting through to you guys, we have a tool that gives us an edge. 
Whatever it is. Right. What, even if that edge is 2% or 3%, I, I don't know if we can... No, it's more, more, than, it's more it, than that. Maybe more than that. What do you mean more than that? It's a lot more than that. It's, it's far more than 50%. Well, I was saying greater than 50. Okay. I was using okay. edge oh, as defined yeah. oh, as, yeah. okay, okay. so maybe 55 or 56% yeah, okay. yeah, of the time. Right. Let's just say and the a, thing is, it doesn't even have to be 50% to actually make consistent money. That's what people can realize, too, that depending on, on what, the, what the ratio is between what you have to risk to find out if a trade is going to work and how much profit it generates when it does, you don't even need a 50% win-loss ratio. Right. I, as a matter of fact, I back in the 80s, there are, you know, uh, one of the most famous traders from the 80s, uh, Richard Dennis, on a percentage basis, 95% of his trades were losers. 95%. But the 5% that were winners were monsters. And he was able to take, he was able to put on trades at a, at a 95% loss ratio and make, in, in, at the most, at one point, in, I think around 1987 or 1988, now, he had $400 million. Is that using his edge? Or his money management, or a combination, a combination of both of all of it. Okay. Com and see, one of the things he did too, and, th and this is some something I, I ought to really qualify it with. He would use orders to actually probe the market. See, there's w one of the things you, I want. I don't want to leave what we're doing right now, but I'm going to just kind of divert just for a moment, okay. and so that people understand that 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 one of the first things to be a successful trader that you have to learn, other than the fact of, of finding a good edge, meaning something that puts a pattern, a collective pattern that that your that your edge identifies that. Puts puts the odds in your favor, right. that there's a higher probability of one thing happening over another once this pattern is present in the market, is that you have to learn how to think in probabilities. In other words, you have to get your expectations you know, aligned with the way the, act, the market actually exists. Right. And when, when you do, in other words, when you, when you learn these kind of mental skills and you're able to execute your trades without, without fear and without hesitation, without analyzing or even without thinking for that matter, because you don't need to think. I'll give you an example. A professional trader. What, what a professional trader thinks about when, when there's an edge present is, uh, does he think about whether the edge is going to work? Absolutely not. Because he, he knows he has learned there's no point. Right. There's no point in, in, in analyzing or judging or, or, you know, uh, uh, or, or building a case for or against whether that trade is going to work. Because he understands the human component, okay? Right. But what he does think about is he thinks about the risk. How much do I have to risk? How far am I going to let the market go against this position to tell me that other traders are either going to come into the market and make me a winner or not? And he also has a plan for how he's going to take profits. Right. But the typical trader, what does the typical trader do? They, they don't have a plan. Or, 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 or they think they about the trade too much. They think about, is this going to be a winner? Is this going to be That's a loser right. for me? The exact opposite of the professional. So, so what the professional does is basically... And then, and then once they make up their mind that it's a winning trade, they don't, they don't predefine the risk, do they? Right. And they also don't have a plan to take profits it's because they think, when they think it's going to be a winner. Win. It, it, it's going to go on. And, and I want to talk about right. that. We're running up on the break here, but I want to talk about that on the other side. But what you're saying is the bottom line is the professional sees the entry. He sees the pattern, whatever it is, the edge, enters in, not thinking if I'm going to win or I'm going to lose, but has a money management strategy in place, knows exactly how much he wants to win or is willing to win and how much he's willing to lose or risk. Right. Exactly. Now, does, he, does he put a cap on the upside? Does he put a cap on his win well, side? Well, it's not a, it's not a matter a of goal. a cap. It's a matter of, of, of how, his assessment of how much potential there is. Okay. In other words, it, see, the problem is on a winning trade, we're, 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 we're obligated in a sense to, to make these never-ending decisions as to you know, what the risk-to-reward ratio is. In other words, as the market's going in my favor, what's the risk of finding out that it's going to go further? And that's why, you know, that's why so many professional traders or people who teach trading advocate scaling out of positions. Right. Mark, this is all great stuff. We're going to have to wind it up. We've got to go to a break. Guys, it's already time. As I said, for a break. We'll be back with much more with Mark Douglas here in three minutes. We'll see you soon here on WTV. Welcome back to the WTV special on putting your mind over the market. I'm Jared Levy. Mark Douglas has been talking about psychology in today's market. Mark, let's continue with our conversation we left off with. We were talking uh, when we left about the flip of a coin. Right. And you said that you had a coin that was actually weighted on one side. You gave an example how a coin was weighted on one side and over a series of flips, that coin had a 70% chance of, in this case, landing on heads. Right. Whereas in our software, we give you the edge, and maybe with our software, you have a better chance of being right or having a winning trade if you get in on a certain pattern. Right. You also talked about how... Um, it's the word right that's, that's really critical here. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's the word right. In other words, in other words, what 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 people need to understand is that is that is how does believing in a random result affect your expectations? Because see, what what we don't want is we don't want to get into trading with the possibility of being disappointed 
or the possibility of being dissatisfied or, or being even betrayed because a lot of traders feel that way. They really mm -hmm. feel betrayed. And the problem is, is that when that potential exists, it, it has the effect of, of affecting the way that we see market information in detrimental ways because, in other words, we all of us have these mental pain avoidance mechanisms that affect our perception of information. Right. So, for an example, if the markets, if I'm in a losing trade and, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I, you know, I got into this trade thinking I was going to be right, Okay. In other words, I did all my evaluation. I did all my analysis. I did my work. I built a case. Right. You know, it's like as the markets, as the markets, you know, moving against me, I'm going to have the tendency to focus on information that tells me that I'm right and ignore the information that tells me that the market is actually trending against me. Okay. In other words, I can I can identify a trend, but I won't be able to identify that trend if I'm putting an inordinate amount of significance on the information that's telling me that I'm right, as opposed to ignoring the information that's telling me that I'm wrong. And see, and overall, if we want to be consistent, the principle that we need to, to keep in mind is that to be consistent, we have to cut our losses and let our profits run. We have to make more on our winning trades than what we lose on our losing trades. And the problem is, is that if I'm susceptible to being disappointed or betrayed, meaning I get into a trade, you know, expecting it to do what I think it's going to do, that, that I'm going to have this tendency to, to uh, distort market information that causes me to hang on to my losers. And in a winning trade, what will happen is that instead of letting a winner run, you know, markets don't go straight up. In other words, if I'm in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, long trade, right. you know, I would like the market to go straight up, but they don't. They go up and they come back and they come. And, and it's the retracements we focus on instead of the fact that the market's still trending in our favor. So what you're saying right now, basically, is I found a stock, for instance, that I love. The stock okay. just had a great news story. The charts are the same as the other stocks I've traded, but just for some particular reason, I feel great about this stock. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it is, but maybe they've had some great news out, and I feel that stock starts to go against me. You know what? Based on the news that's out there, based on the special feeling I have about this stock, I continue to hold my loser. I continue to hold my loser until this thing draws down against me, and I'm in a, and I'm in a major losing position. And I keep losing because I feel in my mind that I had some sort of special, th this stock was special. Is that what you're, you're referring well, to? Or? Not, well, yeah, I could, it could be anything. Because I know just, traders do that. Out yeah, there I know. I, it, it, it could be any, any, any variable kind of information that, that people latch on to. Okay. The, the thing that they have to understand is regardless of the reason that they got into a trade, it doesn't, regardless of the reason, if other traders don't buy into that reason, or if other traders don't have, a, have another reason to want to buy at a price that's worse than yours. You bought the stock at 10. Right. Someone's got to want to buy it at 11. Someone's going to want to buy it at 12 and buy it at 13. And not only be able to buy it at 11, 12, and 13, and 14, they're going to have to take out all the offers, all the traders who think it's high, in other words, at 11, 12, and 13. And so if, if these people aren't coming into the market to do that, well, then whatever reason you thought you had might not be so good. Right. And so that's why it's so critical to predefine your risk before you even get into a trade. And that's why professional traders don't think about it any other way because they know it takes other people. That, that you know, our, my reason might be great, but if someone else isn't buying into it, what difference it does it make? Matter. It doesn't matter because it's not a winning trade. And so, you know, and so if we have this susceptibility to, to be disappointed, it, what it does, it, it, it affects our perception of market information in a way that doesn't allow us to so cut our losses. how do we make ourselves not susceptible? I mean, how, how can you by changing off? Yes, by changing your perspective on this, by really understanding. For an example, Jared, you ever played a slot machine? Yes. Okay. I now don't, I don't like it. You know, you might, okay. <laughs> but I played you, it. You, you, for whatever reason you don't like it, it doesn't matter, okay? It, that's good that you didn't like it because it might make the example even better, okay? <laughs> okay? You play a slot machine. When, uh, when you, you put your money in the machine, let's say it was a quarter machine, okay? Mm -hmm. You put your in the money in the machine, you press the button, and the pattern indicating that there's a payoff doesn't show up. How do you feel? No. Well, yeah. do you feel betrayed? Do you no. feel betrayed by the machine? No, no, not okay. at all. <laughs> and why do you not feel betrayed by the machine? It's just a random, it's just... Oh, it's a <laughs> random outcome. Okay. So, so in other words, you went into it with the belief that you know that you're participating in an event with a random outcome. Right. And as a result, your expectations about the outcome were in, were in perfect alignment with the event itself. My expectation, believe it or not, was to lose. I, I know this sounds crazy, but I, you know, when I put the quarter in, mm -hmm. I thought... You know what? I'm probably going to lose this quarter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, because that's because you know the odds aren't exactly in your favor, and 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 what trading systems can do is actually 
put the odds in your favor in a way where where we own the machine. Believe it or not, I mean this is this is it, it, the whole role reverses if you learn to think about it correctly. In other words, if you understand that you know. So so for an example, well, let me backtrack a little bit and say that say that that most traders. You know, if if you compare trading to a slot machine, the difference would be that with a slot machine, we can't play until we've accepted the risk. In other words, we actually have to put our take our money out of our pocket and put it in the machine, or otherwise we can't play. Right. So that so that implies that we've accepted the risk because the degree to which we have not accepted the risk, we wouldn't be able to put our money. In that the is machine. our loss. The quarter is our loss. That's the risk. No, that's not our loss. That's just the risk. The risk. That's just how much okay. we're willing to invest to find out if it's going to work. Okay. Okay. And then what we do is we wait for a pattern to show up. And if the pattern's uh, you know a jackpot, great. If it's not, then we might be willing to put another quarter in the machine to find out if it is. The difference with trading, and this is where, where people's people's mental idea of what this is all about gets gets messed up. The difference with trading is that the pattern shows up in the market. First. The pattern shows up first. Okay. Then what we have to do is put up our money, hmm. meaning meaning how much am I willing to risk to find out if it's going to work? But <laughs> Most traders, because they evaluate, because they judge, and because they analyze, they think that and build a case for the pattern being right, they actually talk themselves out of believing that the risk even exists. They might give lip service to the idea of putting, into, putting a stop in the market, like, like some of those errors that I said in the beginning. Right. How many people put stops in the market and take them out and then, you know, and then let what would have been a, a small losing trade go into a big losing trade? That's lip service. You see, that's, that, well, okay, I've been told over and over again I've got to put stops in the market, so I'm going to do it. But they haven't really accepted the risk. Right. They see they that every day. Yeah, every day. Yeah, 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 they haven't really, truly accepted the risk because they don't want to be wrong. And what they have to understand is that this is not a right or wrong game. This has nothing to do. Trading a technical methodology or a technical pattern does not have anything to do with being right or wrong. It's just, a, it's just an odds game. That's all it is. In other words, you get an edge, an edge that says I've got the odds in my favor over a series of trades, but you've got to be able to take every single trade because you don't know the sequence to wins and losses. You've got to be able to, to identify what your risk is, and that's simply how much am I willing to spend to find out if other traders are going to come into this market and bid it higher than my price or offer it lower than my price if I sold. That's all it means. And then, of course, you have to have a money management plan for how to take consistent profits. Right. Which, and, and is, see another, which thing, is another problem I want to say. Oh, yeah. But see, the thing is, it's like when you change your perspective, when you change how you think about this, okay, it's like, it's like I know there's a random outcome to these patterns. And so I know it's not right or wrong. And so what potential do I have to get disappointed? No more potential than what you had to get disappointed by putting a quarter in a slot machine and it didn't come up with a jackpot. Right. You see, that's, this is the critical <laughs> thing here, Jared. You've got to be able to change the way you think. This is the, 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 what's the title of this program? Mind, Mind over market. markets? Okay. <laughs> You've got to be able to change the way you think. And how, pro- how does a trader do I mean, what are the steps? I mean, you know, tell is there is there a, a obviously by, by reading your books, by getting themselves immersed in your thinking is certainly a way to do that. Is there anything from this point forward a trader can begin to do or thoughts that traders can you know, try to add to the repertoire to, to begin to think like a professional trader, have that carefree state of mind, and start to change the way that they view the markets and their risk? Is there is there an exercise? That yeah, you can... there's a, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's 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 an exercise in trading in the zone, exercises in in how to think like a professional trader, and and basically all it really takes, Jared, is, is simply a sincere willingness to do it. Honest to God, it's just you know it's just like anything else in our lives. When when we realize that there's that there's a particular goal that we have. And, you know, and, and there's a strong desire to achieve that goal, then we're going to take whatever steps we need to achieve it. What, whether those steps are trading in the zone or, or, or how to think like a professional trader or some other methodology that people are more comfortable with or, or whatever, the point is, is, that, is that if someone really, you know, really sets their mind, any of us, when we really set our mind at getting something, we'll, we'll get there. We, we will get there, but the, but the difference is, like we started out in the beginning of the program, the difference with this is that, is that what we have to set our mind at is how to change our mind, hmm. okay? And, and, and that's, why there's, that's why there's so many people who, who are so close to getting it, but never really, never really get beyond that What's threshold. What's that hurdle? What, why can't... Because people don't want to change the way they think. It's that simple. People don't like changing. 
how can people get to the carefree state of mind that you talk about? By changing the way that they think. <laughs> they, they've, got to, they, they've got to eliminate the potential to think that the market's going to disappoint them. They've got to eliminate the potential to think that the market's going to disappoint them. And the way they eliminate that poten the potential is by understanding that trading is not about being right or wrong. It's a probability game. Right. If and you're trading technically. Now, I don't want to confuse people, but I've got to say something else. Is that, is that traders do evolve. you got evolve. an hour and a half, by the way. Keep we going. We do? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got that long, honestly, God. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, my. <laughs> No, is, is that there are, there are stages of development. In other words, and, and I think I started to talk about this in the last segment, is that there are stages of development. That, that we start out learning these fundamental skills, like learning how to think in probability so that the market doesn't have this potential to cause us to feel emotional pain. Right. We did everything we could. We had our edge. It didn't we, work out. That's right. On. And that's all that it is. When you put on a trade and it doesn't work, all it really, all it really means, all it really means is this, is that, is that, some other traders didn't come into the market that had the same belief that you had or the same conviction that you had about this market doing whatever it is that you thought it was going to do. That's all it is. It's nothing more than that. And you have to learn to walk away. And you have to learn to walk away. I mean, let's put it this way. How, how good do you think the average person is at, at predicting other people's behavior, in someone else's behavior? Not, people aren't that good at predicting other people's behavior. Or even their own behavior, for that matter, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They find themselves doing things that, what, what am I doing this for, you know? And, and so how good are they going to be at predicting collective human behavior? Now, these, the methodologies that, that, that we have access to, these mathematical formulas, do that for us. Right. If you, but you have to understand that, that there's no possible way that these mathematical formulas can predict, can predict the outcome of... of of these patterns on a trade by trade basis, only on a series of trades. In other words, what they're really saying is that I have the odds. So, so when I get a signal, when I get a signal from my methodology, at the very fundamental, most fundamental level, what this is telling me right. is that fresh cross is that fresh cross. <laughs> I have there's a higher prob there's there's a, there's a high or let's say I there's there's the uh, the odds are in my favor. The odds are in my favor that somebody that somebody is going to come into the market. This is what the pattern means. Right. The odds are in my favor that somebody is going to come into the market and bid it higher from here if I bought or offer it lower from here if I sold. That's, that's all it's saying. Now, they're either going to come or they're not. And so as a result, I don't look at this as being a right or wrong. I look at this as how, how much distance am I going to give the market to move away from my entry point to tell me that, that they're either going to come or they're not, and any further is not worth the money of finding out. It's not worth the cost of finding out. You that, talk that's about, all it means. Do you talk about stop losses? Um, you, you talk about stop losses and management in your in your DVD. Yeah, absolutely, but not in, but not like uh, very specific. Not, yeah. not 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 the kind of specifics that you know, like like if you're using if you're in a half an hour uh, time frame, you know how much. Well, how well, that's much the trader's decision. To, yeah, but it, 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 the trader, dependent upon their trade style, is going to adjust their stops according to their account size, according to the exactly. risk tolerance, etc. Right. What you do, I think, is give people an understanding and a basis of, of where they should be placing their risk or how much, not from a dollar perspective, but maybe from a... Uh... From a men yeah, in other words, it, you know, in, in, so, that, so that they can, yes, you're, from a mental perspective, so that they can adjust their trading style in a way that, that conforms to where they're at in terms of their, their, their ability to, to, to take the risk. Would, would one exercise be for a trader to begin testing out their loss? In other words, take a $100 loss, see how you feel. If you were able to take a hundred dollar loss and walk away and not fret too much about it, not let it stress out your the rest of your trading day and not think about it, maybe then you could say, okay, I'm willing to trade a more volatile stock and move to something like a two hundred or three hundred dollar loss, etc. Is that an exercise you think would be beneficial? Oh, absolutely. For the yeah, absolutely. I mean, in other, and that's what I suggest to people, you know, all the time. Especially, you know, I was doing coaching. It's like, and 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 when I was when I was doing coaching on an active basis, I mean, I was coaching some some. Pretty, pretty substantial money managers, and you know they 'd get into a, a situation where they 're on a you know a, a pretty good losing streak, and often it required that they actually go back to a risk level that you know they hadn 't meaning that if they were trading you know ten thousand or a hundred thousand shares or willing to take you know a half a million dollars or a million dollar hit on a trade, you know to get back to where they, they felt more in sync with the market that they may had to go, they may have had to go back to only trading a thousand shares. And see, and, and when you're working in a, in, a, in a corporate situation like that, you know, with other traders, that's often a hard thing to do, but that's exactly what they needed to do. I, I suggest to people that, that, I mean, look at it this way. Um, 
paper trading. Okay, a lot of a lot of people who teach trading say that you know there's no point in in someone paper trading because there's there's oftentimes a huge difference between the results they'll experience paper trading and and what they'll experience when their real money is on the line. Yeah, because there's no real money on the line. In other words, in other words, I'm sure there are probably a substantial number of viewers out there who can make consistent money, consistent money. Following their methodology, of paper trading, and then they then they start doing real trading, and everything changes. Okay, well, and so a lot of teachers have said, well, there's no point in paper trading because you know there, there's there's no correlation between the results. Well, that's not really true because what what paper trading what paper trading can do for people is very very beneficial. One, it it's a graphic demonstration graphic demonstration of the gap that exists in terms of mental skills that they need to acquire. In other words, hmm. in other words, it, it, it's a good way to get familiarized, familiarize yourself with your trading platform. It's a good way to really get confident with your methodology. But more so, it is a graphic representation of the mental skills that you don't have. That you don't That's have. That's an interesting concept. Yeah. So in other words, how does, people, how does someone convince themselves that they need those mental skills? Look at your paper trading. Uh, look at your paper trading in relationship to your real trading. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, if there's, and, and a lot of this, even if people have learned to think in probabilities, which is what we've been talking about pretty, pretty much this whole time, even if people learn to think in probabilities, it doesn't mean that they can really still accept the loss. Right. Because, because, because the way our minds think, in other words, in other words, if, if, I'm, if I have to take a loss on this trade, yep. it could have the tendency to tap me into all the accumulative kind of negative pain of every time I've had to take a loss in my life. And it just doesn't mean in trading. It could mean, you know, yeah, pets or what, you know, people and, and that sort of thing, or jobs. And so, because our minds have this tendency to associate, it, it, it can make it difficult to accept the loss. So a lot of times, what people would have to do, and, and they also would find difficult to do, because a lot of times people get into trading because they want to impress their friends or their family, like I'm a trader. Right. But that what they might have to do is that is that when they graduate from paper trading. They might just, you know, the, the amount of risk tolerance they have might only be just 10 shares and risking a buck on those 10 shares. And you think, well, what's the point of that? Well, the point of that is that, you know, when you can trade those 10 shares flawlessly based on whatever your methodology says right. and do it without any fear or Because you were able to make those trades in the paper. I mean, you right. made those trades it, in the paper. Then you, trade. then, you can go to, then you can go to 20 shares and yeah. see how that feels. Then you go to 30 and gradually work your way up. And people aren't willing to gradually work their way up. This is a concept that we've never even talked about. I, I've never actually heard it put this way, Mark. I have to be honest with you, where you look at your paper trading account as... Kind of, almost your goal, if you will. Almost like this is where I could be this if I was trading be, yes. from a state, from a carefree state <laughs> Absolutely. of mind. Absolutely. It's perfect. This is where I could be if I had that carefree state of mind. If I had the mental skills that allowed me to do exactly what I need to do without reservation, without hesitation, without fear. And that's the way that we can, and that's, you know, and, and that's basically what we're getting at. How do we use the methodology that we have and the capability and the potential of that methodology to its maximum? You need the mental skills to do it. Um, you you made reference before uh, both uh, at Wise Fest and uh, earlier we talked about some events of pain, mm -hmm. pain in your life, and a, a lot of our traders right now feeling some pain with what's been happening in the markets the past couple of weeks. Mark, is there um, does a person have to experience this a, a total drawdown in their account, a total loss in their account where their account's almost wiped out or is totally wiped out for them to make that change in their mind i mean does that does that have to happen does it does it have to be traumatic like that for them to realize oh i've got to change something or or and, and i'm i'm saying this and obviously it can be done without that but have you found that predominantly out, out there you know in, in the people you've taught over the years have people had to experience a high level of trauma before they can actually make the change or can someone just in the normal course of every day with a little bit of dedication actually and i and i'm not Trying to be rhetorical. <laughs> I really want a serious <laughs> answer because there's people out there right now that I'm sure are thinking the same thing. Do I have to lose my whole account? Does this have to happen for me to make a, a well, You're in pain right now, are you, Jared? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm good. I've, I've been out of the Look, market a little. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you mean like the gutter principle? Yeah. The, is that what you're referring well, to? Explain like, the gutter principle. The gutter, yeah. the gutter principle. In other words, <laughs> how, how much in the gutter do you have to be before you're willing to say, um, uh, I'll do anything? Mm hmm as a matter of fact, you get this kind of brings something up, is that when I was when I was actively coaching, um, uh, my my coaching clientele basically fell into two broad categories. Uh, one was with traders who were already successful, who were already consistent, and what they wanted were um, uh, you know they they wanted uh, fine tuning. Okay? okay, they wanted creative ways of fine tuning fine tuning themselves so that they could actually increase their you know increase the amount of money that they make over over a year or whatever. 
And then you had the other group was 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 there literally in the emotional gutter. Okay, <laughs> they're so exasperated, they're so frustrated because of the potential that they. It's so obvious what the potential is. And yet there seems to be these, these invisible barriers that keep them from getting into that, getting into that potential that, that they're, they come to me saying, I'll do anything. I'll, and, and that's, you know, now everyone has different tolerances of pain before they get to the, they get to the point where they say, I'll do anything and mean it and be sincere <laughs> and mean it. Well, and that's, mean that's, it. The that's the whole thing. They got to mean it. Mark, we, uh, we're wrapping up the show. We have a couple more minutes now. There, there was a, okay. a couple points I know you wanted to make before we end up this show. And, and uh, guys, just so you know, next show we're going to open up to phone calls and emails. So if you want to start lining up your emails or your phone calls, do that now. Mark, a uh, couple more minutes to go. Um, in, in this arena, I mean, is there anything, any message you can give to our traders that, or any final thoughts, maybe some a mantra, something? <laughs> <laughs> No, just basically, just just to kind of you know sum up what we've been talking about that that if you know if consistent results are your objective, you know then then you're going to have to learn how to think like a professional trader because that's that's what they do. They make consistent results. That's why the, that's why they're pros. That's why people give them their money to manage. That's why they have jobs that were where they actually trade for a living because if they didn't make consistent results, they wouldn't keep their jobs. And so to do that, you have to you have to. You have to learn to change the way you think about trading in a way where it doesn't, doesn't cause you to have this potential to think that you're going to be disappointed or betrayed or put you into a state of emotional pain. Mm. It's, like, it's like getting to that carefree state of mind. And once you get to that, once you shift your perspective, everything changes. It's not about being right or wrong. And you know, when you really understand that, and, and then you go through the process of learning how to accept the risk of losing, then everything about your everything about your trading will change. So when the patterns present themselves, you trade them. You trade. You, you don't trade think them about it. There's fear, nothing to hesitation. think about. It's like don't think. There's nothing to think about. And you trade within your means, except the risk and how you're going to take profits. <laughs> but I'm saying the pattern itself. When the pattern presents itself, there's absolutely nothing to think about. That is because the objective no part about trading. Because you can know. Yes, there's right. no way you can know what the outcome is going to be. Right. Mark, <laughs> we do have another hour. Like I said, okay. so uh, we, we've got plenty more time to go. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask you real quick. Uh, we've used this word edge yes. a couple of times. Right. A lot of our traders are not familiar with this word edge. I've used it on the floor. Edge to us was basically having a spread in there. In other words, if we had an option that was worth a buck, the ability to buy it for 90 cents or sell it for $1.10. Mm -hmm. How do you define edge uh, as, as a closing thought? Uh, just, just, just simply, just an edge is just a higher probability of one thing happening over another. That's all. Just, just a higher probability of one thing happening over another. But keep in mind that within the context of what we've been talking about, it's a higher probability happening over another over a series of trades. And a series, okay? So in other words, you know, like for an example, what I do is I teach people to, think, to trade in sample sizes. Right. So that, that instead of saying to themselves, I'm going to take the next trade, I'm going to take the next 20 trades. Right. I'm going to keep myself in the game. I'm going to keep myself in the game and see what happens over the next 20 trades. And then if I get the kind of results that I like, I'll take another 20. If I don't, I'll tweak my methodology so that I get better results. I hope you enjoyed the audio. And uh, I definitely find it useful myself when I first started off uh, learning about trading. And uh, I, I got loads of books. A lot of people just keep on using, buying books and reading them. And then f sometimes I even finish them and just put it in, in the back of my mind kind of thing but you know as, as I grow and always ask myself why am I doing all these stupid things and I try to find out for my you know log trading log and find all stupid things I've done and why am I doing it and find a way to tackle them you know this book from Mark Dennis says well so the you know, trading psychology book seems to speak to me but I think Mark's one put it very clearly in his books and as well as in this audio, uh, basically on this YouTube video as well. Um, what what it actually meant to you know to be consistent, you know, to to try to, you know, what your potential of your system can give you, but you're not achieving it because a lot of it's just mini mind, it's a mental game. So so this is what I always believe, as as we grow f uh, as a trader, going from um, one um, what you call from one stage to another. Um, the technical skill become less and less important. It's more of a mental skill that you have to execute. You have to, um, in all sort of situation, able to uh, manage your risk and uh, not to 
uh, get your emotion uh, in, 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 in a way that stop you doing trading and uh, get worried so much about you, you just lost a uh, trade that you thought supposed to take you to the moon, so to speak. You know, that, that's type of thinking. And, and in, 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 in what Mark basically said here, basically, you know, consistency is, uh, is something that you need to take time to learn. It's a skill. And the potential uh, profit gap between what your system, uh, with a pos- for example, let's say have a positive edge, and say you can do this and achieve uh, this type of level of um, of uh, uh, financial gain, but you're not actually getting it in your life system. This all this is really a lot. Some of it may be due to you know um, the the market might slip and you know fast movement of market prices and stuff. But most of it is you just um, not not executing like you know you in a certain situation worry about things and then you suddenly become uh, something uh, what you call um, if effectively just um, froze you freeze like in front of uh, like a rabbit in front of a of a, of a, of a car alarm car light and and just don't do anything and then the market just run away against you or away from you and then you just stand there and say oh what the hell have I done you know what why can I do something so all these are very much men- mental game I think I think the the other thing is um, um, this execution of the your trading plan I hope you have one is like is, is, is the key but how you execute it is is basically we need to focus to the consistency here. but I think also the other thing mess uh, uh, us up as traders myself as well is um, how to handle the randomness of the market? I mean, Mark tried to explain it to you know there are people on the market like like I always said before you know you never know who is on the other side of the of the trading desk um, try try taking your trade or so forth. Uh, they could have lost some money or a retail trader like yourself. Uh, you you have no idea what what the hell they go do next. It could be suddenly a twist from Donald Trump and then the whole market exploded or got <laughs> tanked just because some. Idiot, <laughs> so I'm gonna say, you know, do some tricks and it's totally out of your control. What what are you gonna do? How are you gonna handle this? You know, are you gonna freeze? Are you gonna you know get out of the market if it hurt you? Uh, even though uh, it was initially in your, you know, going in your favor and suddenly everything gone gone reverse, you have to get out. Uh, you know, are you quick enough? You're nimble enough? Just get out that kind of thing and not to. Um, still thinking, oh, I have this yesterday. Uh, I should have made all this money. And I should have get out yesterday, but you can't because. Yesterday is gone, and you have no idea today somebody's going to do something stupid or funny, um, uh, whatever they're doing, and then just trash your trade. Uh, and it's something that you, you really have to think about. I mean, this, this notion about thinking like casino, I think, is something that people not think or talk about enough. You know, the casinos put there. Um, I mean, people in America probably know, so I mean, from Hong Kong, Macau, it's very close by. I mean, people go there with all the all the lovely looking buildings and all the shows or all the free food or those things like that it's not free really you know just try to get you in there why do you want to get you in there because they have a set of games you know systems basically you know give them a positive result if loads of people playing those games and that's what they uh, uh, try to do and you, you know, go there and maybe a, uh, uh, a concert you know, or a boxing fight in, in the area and you everybody go there and then you stay in the hotel and you uh, have a extension of a casino extension and you just go go there give you, you know, maybe a hundred dollars to a free bet and then you you find yourself betting some more and more and more and then the, the this is how the casino industry game you so, you know, so to speak and they they have a system there, and all they do is co-execution, getting people in the door, getting them to play, getting them to play as many as you can, and just watch out any, anybody who is doing, try to cheat the system, so to speak, and as, as, assuming everybody just follow the rules and follow the, the game plan, you know, casino just make thousands and millions every year and pay for the building, pay for the food, pay for the people who are actually working there, and then some, you know. I mean, it's all these are uh, not free, but what do they actually do in the core? Is having a positive edge system and keep on taking it, um, getting people playing it. Now, when you transfer that as uh, to trader, it essentially means is you need to uh, to trade. You need to have the ability to trade. So you need to manage your risk that you still have enough money in the in your trading accounts to take the next trade, to take the next trade, to take the next next trade, and each trade really is uh, unrelated to each other. It's mutual, mutually exclusive. I mean, that's just mathematical speak, but all you need to know is, you know, 
this trade may be winner next trade might might not be a winner you don't know and the maximum i mean the the, the chance of is how big the winning is or how how bad is 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 the uh, is the losses is you have no idea either so what you need to do is basically have some method that basically say okay to manage your risk so you got enough money left in your trading account to take the next trade and to find out if the next trade is going to be a winner or loser you risk a little bit of money you know you 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 probe the market like like you go into a bath hot bath uh, uh, having a bath you don't just jump in the into bath after you make the water and your hand seems to tell you everything's fine but your feet at bottom <laughs> may not feel the same because you got softer tissue there and and you basically you put your toes in a little bit try a little bit and then just make sure it's okay before you put your ass on it you know and put your body in it to do to, to have your bath so the same thing here um this is why i like the the trend following we're doing the pyramid thing is um and unlike our, our, our other method, perhaps you know, you don't just go in once and that's it. We go in with a little probe to basically find out if the market is working. Our system is telling us there's a positive uh, edge. You know, that's a positive, a high chance of a good outcome. But that's just a chance. That's it. It can turn turn on on its head on its time and just basically bite you on the back and you lose your your money. So rather than you know lose, uh, uh you know. Put in a tray one percent blah right away, and I say all the time just risk one percent. I put in you know, maybe half a percent or a little bit less than that. Just probe the market, see if it's okay or not. If it's okay, uh, making you money, and then you put some more and put some more. You know that's the pure the beauty of pyramiding. It helped you to you know safeguard the the your your basically your account the money in your account and risk as little as you can just trying to find out if this trade got to work or not because from if you look at any any charting software open amazon apple whatever you know hsbc or index or dax whatever you look at it most of the time it's like going sideways or up and down and very volatile only sometimes they're making a big big waves you know like maybe two or three times a year the problem is you have no idea when that happened so you have to be in the market to find out if that, if, if any of this trading signal, your, your system is actually telling you, go in the market to find out if this could be a, a big winner or, or not. So, but you have no idea, so you keep on just have to go in there and, 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 and try. I think this, this um, the other thing that Mark talks about much, uh, a lot is, I think, you, you hopefully you got this, is that people have a bias. When they go into the market, they whatever the information they get, they got to trigger them to go into the market. They somehow think they have to be right. You know, they go into the market, they think this. Um, I put this trade on, it will work. It will be fine, it will work. Uh, mainly because I've done some technical analysis, fundamental analysis, but the market come back and bite your butt and tell you, you're wrong, mate, you know? So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna get out? Or are you just gonna sit there like a rabbit? You know, and uh, it's especially hard for people, from my point of view, point of view, if you have a very successful business or you know career somewhere else, and you follow the method, and you 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 think you think you can transfer that method over, but unfortunately, like I said before, one plus one in trading might not equal to two. It could be minus ten. It could be plus hundred. You have no idea, even though you follow one plus one, it should think it's two. Sometimes it's two. You know, sometimes it could be much different. And I think this is what, you know, causes people issue. They thought they can transfer, you know, um, the, the successful experience of another, let's say, running a, a, a restaurant and then do trading. And they say, oh, I'm very good at a restaurant. I've got 10 shops, you know, 10 restaurants around the country. And I come in, do trading, and boom, they tank them. You know, and they thought, you know, they, they, they have rules and risk everything they understand how to do things but it's not it's very random when you go into uh, trading and uh, the the more bias you have uh the worse you, you might get you know, uh, as a result so so you basically you need a trading system that have a positive edge that have a high to tell you that um, it can fed the market and tell you there's a high chance of a positive outcome and you basically latch on it but to actually find out if it actually works or not you need to you know trade with a little bit of money if that was working. They had a bit more, a bit more until you know, f- up, up to you know, five, a little in increase that in, you know, increment. That's how how I traded, and it this takes time to learn. Like, you know, skill. I mean, out, out there, a lot of people just think of buying a system. Let's say you know, so many financial companies just tell you buy a system, it works. But 
the problem I, I found is that they, it doesn't understand. Uh, they, they don't know about your makeup, mental makeup. You know, how you feel about money, uh, how you feel about losing money, what, what, uh, how you handle yourself mentally when that happens. Um, and that is, uh, and also how much money you've got, you know, and how much you actually put on the table. And uh, can you handle that loss? You know, when, when you haven't touched your stop loss yet, but, you know, it's losing money. And if you trade big, it could be thousands of pounds of dollars or tens of thousands of pounds of dollars. What, what's your mental state? You know, are you happy? You know, you know about it? Uh, are you able to, you know, even lose that, let's say, a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars without sweat? You know, not upsetting what you do at home. I mean, a lot of traders out there probably uh, knows that you know they they trade like become a gambler. They keep on just trading, trading without a system. Even if they have a system and follow. While while they're losing, the their mental state not quite right, or they don't to detach themselves. They go back home and you know, or to their friends, and just start to be nasty people because they're agitated by the by by tra- uh, the trading result at the time, and uh, you know they start arguments and bad relationship and so forth. You know it happens, but the only way to deal with it is like treating each um, trade as random event and trade as little as you can. I mean, risk as little as you can. So if the outcome is good or bad, you don't care. It's very much like, you know, playing the slot machine. That's what, um, um, uh, Mark is talking about here. You put a quarter there, whatever minimum amount in, you don't really care. The lottery, you, you know, there's very little chance you're going to win, but if you don't buy it, it's worse than not, not, uh, basically have naturally no chance. So, you try and put some money on the slot machine and expect pattern to come out or your pattern comes in your lottery. Sometimes it happens, sometimes not. But you didn't expect it to win. Do you? you expect I mean, to, from the bottom of your heart, you probably expect it to, to, to get something if you're lucky. If not, it ah, doesn't really matter. But that's exactly the state. You should trade. You should use the trading. You know, in my work or might not work and therefore you risk your appropriate amount accordingly don't try to like oh there's a way to make money i bet my house on it and this trade this next trade i'm taking is definitely going to make me money and they'll stop all my money or triple or whatever and that is gambling that that that's not trading in my view and basically to even understand this before i just talk about it takes, takes you a long time to learn from you know, getting a bloody head and a bloody nose in 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 trading a blow of money, a number of accounts. I mean, there's some smart people here, you know, in the world definitely, and they read about other people's problems and and uh, try to avoid it. But uh, ultimately, we will make my own unique mistakes. Some, maybe you know, uh, our own. Others, it's just repeatable what other people have done, and um, we will definitely make mistakes. And this best way to to learn is from learn each from each other's mistakes and hopefully. Uh, you get a warning bell from somebody who have, who have failed big time, and then you basically learn from that and try to you know, find a way to, to 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 help you to trade, not to be like them and to be better yourself, that kind of thing. But it, there's, there's a lot of things that you you can actually do. But the 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 problem I I think uh, a lot of the time people is they they basically don't have a plan they don't know how to risk they don't know how to handle the risk and then they always think they are right because they are students at school and uh, they don't know how to handle a random event and i mean that m- most of all is uh, uh, i think i've said it before is um best things to do is get a corn and basically just flip it yeah a fair corn 50 percent chances hair 50 percent chances tail and just look at how many tails and heads that you have you know streak of tails a streak of uh, uh, heads, heads is winning trail, tails is uh, is uh, fail failings, uh, is uh, losses, and, and and look at that, and look at the losses and think you know let's say there are seven straight losing trade that can happen, and okay you flip a hundred times it happens two or three times, and and you ask yourself can I can I handle this? Can I handle this in in trading having seven f- f- straight losses? Okay. Don't think about the winnings when you look at themselves and what should I do to eliminate my risk? Can I handle this? That kind of thing. You know, those kind of stuff. And I think it's it's very useful to actually think like that way. And also, you know, Mark talked about, you know, learn to think like a professional trader. Basically, very much detach. The way that I found detachment is, first of all, read about things, you know, um, um, have your mind developed the right way. But read, you know, mind feed yourself. Second is go back to uh, test your system. Just look at how often it can lose and you're happy with it. 
and um, not just on paper trading, but you then go to live trading, but you risk as little as you can, trade at least six months, maybe a year, just to find out you know, how you handle your losses and write those things down, write each of your trading down, uh, trades down, you know, before and after, and how you feel during the time. And then you get, you know, six months later, a year later, go back and look at it and think, oh, uh, I, I was in this state and this causes me to lose this money. I was too eager, too greedy or, or listen to, to, to news and just jump in the market without doing you know, your own analysis or following your system at all. You know, those kind of things jump down and you can slowly and definitely improve your, your trading. That's, that's how I feel. But, but to be totally you know, very detached, for me anyway, after you have um, um, what you call... Um, trust your system of you tested to death more or less and trust your system to handle um, the losses and be you know uh, detached as much as possible is risk as little as possible risk small if it's I mean, let's just say you got 100 pounds and you lost a quid what do you care doesn't matter you know buy a sweet cost you know more than a quid anyway lose it it doesn't matter but you lost 100 quid and all you, that's all you have and you, it hurts not just your pocket, but also mental state. So you, you trade according to what you can handle. And a lot of this, it basically is depends on the person. And each person is different. I may be able to handle, you know, losing 100 pounds per trade. You might be only able to handle 50 pounds or 10 pounds or 20 pounds. It's really de- uh, depends on the person. But over time, once you learn about a system, able to handle all the losses and, you know, you know, what what to do with it, Man, uh, how to handle your mental state. You might be able to move from, you know, losing 10 pounds to 20 pounds, 50 pounds, you know, up to 100 pounds or more, you know, but it takes time to, to, to learn. So hopefully today, I hope you have uh, learned a lot from Mark's um, interview, uh, the order extract I've done, and um, I hope um, you can get some something out of it and uh, learn from it. I will put the actual link of this uh, the the YouTube uh, extract I've done um, uh, uh, that I found on YouTube uh, link in the description and uh, also a couple of books that I have affiliate links uh, from Mark then you can actually you can go go and read about it or buy it just up to uh, those affiliate links but um, definitely go and uh, uh, I will I mean go go and learn a bit more about Mark and go and listen to this podcast uh, a bit more and also find out his uh, uh, YouTube videos about on uh, on YouTube about uh, um, Mark and you definitely can learn a lot more out of it than uh, you know you try to learn everything yourself because a lot of it what is actually all these failures all these problems people have already done it before you and there's a lot of information out there and YouTube is a big good search engine you can find a lot of information there so Go, go and uh, search and find out and hopefully uh, you learn a lot more from, from there. So I hope you like this uh, podcast and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.